Hello, welcome to GTEC Techno Solution Private Limited. We are going to discuss about the muscle movement and the actions that are done by the muscles by a human muscular system. So these are the topics that we are going to cover. First, we are going to see the types of muscular skeletal movement which includes flexion, extension, hyperextension, abduction and adduction, circumduction and rotation. Followed by this, we will be studying about attachment and actions of skeletal muscles. So the types of muscular and skeletal movement. Our first movement is flexion, which is nothing but bending a body part. So your bending of head is flexion and taking it back is extension. So the bending of your head is done by the help of sub-occipital muscles. So using the sub-occipital muscles one can bend the head and that moment is known as flexion. The next moment is extension which is nothing but straightening a body part. So you can see over here, a person can straighten a body part emphasizing the muscles over the shoulder and that is the deltoid muscle. So using the deltoid muscle, a person can straighten a body part and the moment is known as extension. Our next moment is hyperextension. If you extend a body part past the normal anatomical position, then it is known as hyperextension. If you see, if you bend the head forward, then it is known as flexion. And bringing it back to normal position, that is extension. If you bring back your head past the normal position, then it is known as hyperextension. The muscles such as your thoracic muscle, scalenus medius muscle, splenus cervix muscle are the muscles that help you to make these movements. Our next moment is abduction and adduction. If you move a body part away from the anatomical position, then it is known as abduction. So moving a body part away from the anatomical position is abduction. If in case you move a body part towards the anatomical position, then it is known as adduction. So here if you see, the movement is done by your deltoid muscle that is located in your shoulder region. So that is what is meant by abduction and adduction. Our next moment is circumduction. If you move a body part in a circle, then it is known as circumduction. Some of the examples are your shoulder joint and your hip joint. 
So rotating your arms is known as circumduction. Similarly, if you rotate your feet or your leg, it is known as circumduction. So if you move a body part in a circle, then the movement is ultimately known as circumduction. Our next moment is rotation. If you see, we can rotate our head from left to right and vice versa. And you can also rotate your legs. If you rotate your legs away from your medial position, then it is known as lateral rotation. If in case you rotate your leg towards the medial position, then it is known as medial rotation. The muscles or the joints that help us in rotation is medulla oblongata, scalenus medius muscle of your neck, levator scapulae muscle, suboccipital muscles. So these muscles join together and help us to rotate our head from left to right and vice versa. So the moment is rotation. Next we are going to see how the muscles are attached to the skeleton and how they can perform some actions after attachment. The actions that are produced by your muscle depend largely on what the muscles are attached to. The attachment sites can be classified as origin and insertion. If the muscle is attached to less movable bone, say your frontal bone, the muscle frontalis is attached to the frontal bone. It is less movable, hence the attachment is known as origin. If in case your muscle is attached for a site which is more movable like your hip junction, then the attachment is known as insertion. So that is about your attachment sites. The body movements include elevation, depression. If you see, if you lift a body part, then the movement is termed as elevation. If you lower a body part, then the movement is known as depression. If you elevate your shoulders as a result of your shrugging expression, then it is known as elevation. If you lower the shoulders, then the movement is depression. So these body movements are done by the help of the muscles such as your infraspinatus muscle, your supraspinatus muscle, your rhomboid major muscle. So these are the muscles near your shoulder that enables you to perform the movements of elevation and depression. Our next body movements are as follows. If you move your feet such a manner that the toes are pointing down, then the movement is known as plantar flexion. If in case you point your toes up, then the movement is known as dorsiflexion. This is in case of your feet. In case of hands, if you turn the palm 
of the hand down that is the palm of your hand is facing down then the movement is known as pronation if you turn the palm of the hand up that is your palm of the hand is facing up then the movement is known as supination so these are some of the body movements produced by your feet and hand some more body movements include inversion if you turn the sole of the foot medially that is towards the median of a body then the movement is known as inversion if you turn the sole of the foot laterally that is away from the median of the body then the movement is known as aversion if we move a body part posteriorly that is towards the back here the shoulder is moved towards the back then the movement is known as retraction if we move the body part anteriorly that is towards the front then the movement is known as protraction the movement is usually produced by a group of muscles the muscle that is responsible for most of the movement is known as the prime mover cause that is the main important muscle which causes the movement if a muscle helps the prime mover by stabilizing the joints then the muscles are known as synergists if a muscle produces the movement opposite to the prime movement that is the movement is opposite to that of the prime mover muscle then the movement is known as antagonist or agonist so the purpose of antagonist or agonist is to relax when the prime mover contracts so here if you see your muscle over here is in contraction position while the muscle over in your lower portion of the upper arm that is your triceps is in relaxation position at the same time when your biceps is in relaxation position then your triceps is in contraction position so that is what is meant by your prime mover and antagonist Thank you so much for joining JTEC on muscle movements and actions.